Hi, Thermal Master just sent me one of their latest thermal cameras for smartphones, and here it is. It is the Thermal Master P3, as you can see here. If you look at the product box, the claims are actually quite impressive. For example, it claims to be able to resolve features as small as 0.5 millimeters, and it can be focused with a distance between 8 millimeters up to 80 meters, and the highest temperature it can measure is up to 600 degrees Celsius. Anyway, as you can see here, the resolution is advertised as Super IR resolution of 512 by 384. It seems quite impressive, but don't let this number fool you, as the actual resolution of this camera remains 256 by 192, as I will show you in the specs in just a little bit. To achieve that higher equivalent resolution, there is obviously some post-image processing going on here. And a common technique is to utilize multiple images of the same subject and derive the higher resolution content. The exact details of the technique used in the thermal camera were not explained, but the one I mentioned is actually quite common. Of course, the downside of combining multiple images using algorithm post-capturing is that it will impact the frame rate. But for consumer-grade thermal cameras, the maximum frame rate is regulated, and it's not actually that high. For the P3, it's specified at 25 frames per second, which is adequate. Anyway, let's take a look at what is in the box. And you can see here, here inside is our product manual. Of course, you also have this warranty card. And the product manual is quite thick, but there's actually not that much content here. It's just there are multiple languages here. Anyway, let's find the English specification here. Not sure if you can see this or not, but clearly it says that the IR resolution is 256 by 192. So that's the native resolution. And the higher resolution, as I mentioned earlier, is done through some post-processing. Now yeah, let's see what's in this box. Ah, that's our extension cable. So you don't necessarily need to connect a device directly to your smartphone. You can also use this extension cable instead. And finally, here is the soft carrying pouch with the P3 inside. So let's actually take a look. The P3 feels very solid in your hand, as the case is made of aluminum, as you can see here. I wouldn't be surprised if it is actually machined aluminum. It does feel very premium. And yes, it supports both Android and iPhone. In fact, there is actually a supplied adapter if you still have one of those old iPhones. Thank goodness the latest iPhones all use USB-C port now. I'm an Android person, and to be very honest, I have never used an iPhone. But it's good to see that we finally have some standardization, so that devices like this can be used with either iPhone or Android without having to worry about proprietary connectors. The P3 is actually quite a bit larger compared to the P2 that I reviewed a while back. Sidewise, it's very similar to the top-down thermal camera that I reviewed on this channel. Now, of course, this P3 has adjustable focus. It's actually more similar to the Infrared T2S Plus in that regard. But I couldn't get the Xtherm software working on my new phone, and to be very honest, I haven't spent much time troubleshooting that. Anyway, I'm using my old phone to shoot the video here, so I can't show you live pictures with the T2S Plus. But I will take some pictures as part of the comparison, as I think it's actually a very comparable thermal camera, capability-wise. And here are all these four cameras side-by-side, side, and you can get some reference in terms of their sizes. Size-wise, the P3 is very similar to the top-down. In fact, the top-down is a little bit larger than the P3. But the specs of these two are actually quite similar. Of course, the top-down does not have a macro lens. The P2 is the smallest one here. It has a fixed focal length, but it does have this detachable macro lens you can clip on. And finally, here is the Infrared T2S Plus, and it also has an adjustable macro lens, as you can see here. Later on, I'll try to compare the capture image quality of all of these thermal cameras, as their specs are very similar, and then you can decide where the P3 sits in terms of image quality and which one better suits your needs. Before I do that comparison though, let me first show you the P3 with the Tempmaster app. And here is the Tempmaster app I downloaded earlier. Let me plug in the thermal camera here. It should automatically recognize it. And you can see that now it is connected. It's recognized as P3. So let me turn it on. And it took some time. And you can, by the way, you can see the background. Of course, it's not in focus. Let me actually try to adjust it a little bit. 
so that you can at least see what I'm looking at here in the background. The app is essentially the same as the one for P2. It automatically detects the thermal camera that is attached. Up here you can see that we have the current temperature range is minus 20 degrees to 150 degrees. For this camera, we actually have two temperature ranges. You can see here, the other range is 100 to 600. Of course, you can switch between them manually, and it does take some time for the temperature range switch. But once it's switched, you can see that now we're in a different range. Of course, the contrast is a little bit poor because right now we're in a wider range. And we can go back to the minus 20 to 150. Of course, it will take some time to switch it back. Most of the time, you probably just want to leave it in the auto mode. Depending on the temperature range being measured, the app will automatically switch between these two ranges. And the clinking sound you heard was from the shutter. In fact, you can actually calibrate it by pressing this button. And you can see that you can manually calibrate the thermal imaging camera. The board behind, that's a single board computer, and it's been running for a while, so that the components had warmed up. And you can see that actually the quality is quite good. Now the beauty of this manual macro lens is that you can adjust the focus and ensure that captured images are as crisp as possible, as you can see here. On top of the manual here, we have this X3. Actually, that's where the magic happens. Let me enable that. And you can see that once it's enabled, now you may not be able to see in the minute details here, but when enabled, the captured images are actually further processed to enhance the resolution. Now, the enhanced image does look a little bit artificial as the edges in the thermal images do become sharper. So let me actually try to find an edge. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. I know that right now you're looking on the screen and probably can't see it very clearly, but I'll definitely include some pictures later on in the video. But you can see here if I disable it and now re-enable it. I'm not sure if you can see, but we do have some sharpening going on once the X3 is enabled. And down here, this toolbar, that's where you find all the features you would expect from a good thermal camera app. You can do all sorts of measurements here. So for example, if I click on the thermometer, you can see that we can do a point and I can add different temperature points here. You can see. And the temperatures are displayed up here. So let me clear that. And here you can also detect the temperature along a line. And you can do that within a rectangle, a circle, so on and so forth. So let me clear that. And also you can display the high and low temperatures. That's also a different option. And of course, you also have the option to select different color schemes. For example, right now it's iron red. In fact, this is actually my favorite, but you can also do it in grayscale, inverse grayscale, and a different color scheme here. You can see that. We have quite a few of these. Anyway, let's go back to Iron Red. And of course, you can take still pictures and record videos. And there's also a picture-in-picture -picture functionality. Let's uh, give it a try. We can turn it on. And you can see that that's actually a problem of these cameras because you can see the camera is showing right up here, whereas the thermal camera is down here. So the images are actually not aligned at all, especially given this close range. Now, personally, I don't find this feature that useful, as you could just easily take a look at what is behind and look at the actual target you're looking at versus using the camera, trying to figure out where the target is. Now, in my opinion, it would be much useful if it can overlay the infrared image onto the optical one, but that would require precise alignment with the optical image. And to be very honest, I've only seen that feature on dedicated thermal cameras. So for me, this feature is something I probably will not use. Anyway, let's come here. And of course, you can adjust the brightness, contrast, scale, so on and so forth. Let's turn the scale on. You can see the temperature scale on the side here. That can be useful. Anyway, so that's all the features in the software. And now I have a hot plate in the background. That hot plate is at 350 degrees. And let's actually use the high temperature range to take a look at that. And you can see that we are able to 
see that hot plate and also we have detected temperature of course the temperature is a little bit off because we're actually not looking directly at hot plate itself but you get an idea now i think we should compare the p3 to some of the other thermal cameras i have mentioned before and to do that i'm going to take some thermal images of this single board computer down here so that we can be sure we're looking at the exact same subject and before i do that let me actually show you the board with this p3 and this is a live view you can see that at roughly about 10 centimeters from the board here is what you can see of course the macro lens is adjustable and it can actually go much closer but this is the distance i wanted to show you And here's a view from the top down. Of course, the top down does not have a macro lens, so I cannot go any closer. And here is the P2 with the macro lens on. Let's take a look here. In order to do the comparison, I need to make sure the conditions are controlled very carefully so that we're comparing apples to apples. Anyway, I used different thermal cameras and took the pictures of this single board computer and I try to take it at exact angle with the same conditions so that the pictures are more comparable. Anyway, so let's take a look at the results. Here is a thermal image captured by the P3. That is the entire board at a distance of roughly 2 feet, or 60 centimeters away. And for this picture, the X3 had been toggled off. You can see that the thermal resolution is actually quite good, and you can make out all the major components. Now in this picture, the X3 had been turned on. The picture quality actually degraded somewhat, in my opinion. And I think the reason is that the board is densely populated, and there are just too many components on it. So the additional contrast doesn't really do a good job, as it seems some components got overly emphasized, and some components actually became more blurry. Anyway, it is nevertheless still a pretty good picture. And this next picture you're looking at here is taken with top down. Because it does not have adjustable focus, the image quality is obviously not as good as the P3, but it is still quite good for a fixed focus thermal camera. Here I have a picture taken from the P2. This picture is with X3 toggled off. You can see that the image quality is actually slightly worse than what's captured by top down. Now, with the X3 enabled, the picture is actually looking worse on the P2 than without the X3. The only true contender here, in my opinion, is the Infi-Ray X Therm 2. You can see that the thermal image capture here is actually pretty good. The main issue though I have with the X Therm 2 is their software. For whatever reason, you can't get the software directly from Google Play Store, and the software can only be installed via the APK package, and that definitely raises some eyebrows. Now, let's take a look at some of the close-up pictures. And for this comparison, I can't use the top-down thermal camera, as it does not have a macro lens, so I'll compare it with the other two thermal cameras. This is the thermal image of the inductor on the PCB, as you saw earlier. It's taken with the P3 with the macro lens adjusted to the closest range possible. The X3 mode is also enabled. You can see the quality of the capture thermal image is excellent. Here's the same inductor taken with the P2. Now, the picture quality is pretty good as well. The main limitation of the P2 is that the focus of the macro lens is fixed. Here is the same subject taken with the Xtherm T2S Plus. The thermal image quality is pretty good as well. Now, with the Xtherm, it actually has greater zoom capability. And here you can see I took a picture of the same inductor with even higher magnification. And here I will show you a few more pictures taken by different thermal cameras of the same components on the PCB one by one, and you can judge the image quality yourself. Let me leave you with a few more thermal images I captured earlier with the P3.
All in all, I think the P3 is an excellent thermal camera. The adjustable macro lens produces outstanding thermal image quality whether the subject is in the distance or in close range, and the Thermal Master app is quite polished. At just under $300, the price is actually quite competitive. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.